Hello everyone. This hour, <coughs> excuse me, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we're doing part five of William Faulkner's Barn Burning. I'll do a little uh, review in the first two to three minutes of class so you can see where we were, and then we're going to continue reading, and we may just finish the story in this class. Let's see how far we get. So that's a little bit about my class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. And here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking, tune in to the new words, and open up to your classmates. In other words, just relax and have fun. Oh, and at the end of class, I'll give you a set of links if you want to get in touch. You can follow me on Verbling, read a tweet, talk to me on Facebook and Google+, watch a class on YouTube, or even schedule a private class directly with me. All right, we're going to jump right into it because I got uh, a bit of a late start. Hang on just a second. Let me get my camera on. And let's see if I can get this to work. And there we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to have a voice today, <coughs> but we'll give it a try. Just briefly. Your vo voices are a little different <laughs> today. Some, something crawled. How do you, how do you get your call? I, had a, I, had a, I was sick on Monday. Oh. But last night, Something crawled into my mouth and died, and uh, maybe that's what happened. Something yeah. crawled into my mouth and died, and now I sound like this. Do you think I'll survive, Yuki? Uh, I, 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 I believe you will survive. <laughs> you will survive. But, uh, I, but are I you okay? It, I made it this far. <laughs> I made it this far. Um, just a quick... Uh, a quick, quick, quick review. Quick review. I'm going to read a summary. The, the, the description in the story is really dense. It's much worse than I remember. And I've read the story many times, but it's been about, I don't know, 20 years. But I don't remember it being quite so difficult to follow. But um, even for me, it's a bit difficult to know exactly what's going on. So, I want to just read the description of the events that we read yesterday. If you hang on a second. Um, so, if you remember, after they get kicked out of the first um, place that we find them, them meaning the Snoops family, that night the family camps. After Sardi falls asleep, his father wakes him and tells Sardi to follow him. Sardi does. His father accuses him of being on the verge of betraying him in court. Do you know that expression, on the verge of? On the verge of. Verge. So the of the, on the, uh, about the limit, yeah? On the limit, right. On the, limit. On, the, on the verge of. In other words, just about to do something, on the verge of. <clears throat> so his father accuses him of being on the verge of betraying him in court. And he hits Sardi. Sardi is the Colonel Sartoris, who is the boy, but they call him Sardi. Then he tells him, the most important thing is to stand by your family, stick with your family, or stick with your blood, or, or they won't stick with you. Okay, that was a, a few classes ago. And yesterday, uh, there's two little paragraphs here I'll read, just to make sure everything is clear. The next day, the Snopes arrive at their new home, a shack on the farm where they were working as tenant farmers. So we saw them at the shack at the very end of yesterday's class. Abner, that's the father, wants to talk to the owner and he takes Sardi with him. When Sardi sees the owner's fancy white mansion, he feels like everything just might be all right for the very first time in his life, actually. He thinks his father can't possibly hurt people who live in a house like that. In the yard, Abner deliberately steps in some fresh horse, what's the polite word? Droppings. 
okay. <laughs> he deliberately was. <laughs> but you want you want me to say the real one? <laughs> <clears throat> no. He st he st he steps in horse poop. Remember, he could have walked around it. He could have walked around it, but he deliberately has this rhythm, you know, doom doom doom. Because he's got this limp. He deliberately steps in horse poop, forcing his way into the mansion and tracks his horse poop all over the French ornate rug, walking past the servant or the butler, whatever he is. So I forgot to say that yesterday. It wasn't just dirt. <laughs> he, you know, he makes a good first impression. Later that day, <clears throat> the owner of the rug and mansion... Do you remember the name of this character? Who's the owner of the plantation? Do you remember which character that is? Which we meet him for the first time. We only see him on a horse. We don't actually uh, hear him or get a description. But we see him riding up in a horse. Mm -hmm. Do you remember his name? Yeah, Major of Spain. Major of Spain. Mm -hmm. Later that day, the owner of the rug in the mansion, Major of Spain, has the rug dropped off at Abner's shack. Oh, I thought that was him. Maybe it wasn't him. Okay, but anyway, the rug is dropped off. Abner sets his two daughters to clean it and then uh, then dries it in front of the fire. Uh, and I think that's where it stops, actually. Mm, yeah, actually, that's where we stopped. I thought we did a little bit more. I think that's where we stopped. So... I'm going to stop the description there. I don't know if it would be easier to read it first, the description, because it's, it's just a summary of events, or to read the story first. But okay, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Um, if you click on Class 6, which is on page number 1 of your notes, or if you go down to page 14, we're going to pick up pretty much there. The rug was just dropped off. Um, the father says, go on, pick it up. The two sisters stooped, broad, lethargic. Um, what They had the tawdry ribbons. We were talking about this yesterday. And the girls, instead of pointing out that maybe, instead of uh, bringing muck into the house the first time you meet your new boss, uh, maybe instead of doing that, the new boss should not have had an expensive rug in the front door of his house. That's how they rationalize it. Um, okay, anyway. So we're going to pick up actually on 56. And let's see who's here. It's just the two of you. Okay. That's weird because there was like a... The class was completely booked. But maybe... Uh, I got a late start, so maybe people didn't realize I started the class. Um, Sorry, you uh, you go you go you go back and get get dinner. Get what does get mean? Uh, before I I I I I saw the word, but I I couldn't understand. It. Get to it. Get. To ju just I, I I think it means get, but we pronounce it as get. Because uh, she's because he says, you go back and get dinner. Because <laughs> that's how he talks. It's get to get. Get, oh, okay. but he, but they've got they've got accents. They've got a they've got a southern draw, which is a, a a southern accent, a deep south accent. You go back and get dinner. I'll tend to this. So, in the description in the dialogue, Faulkner writes it as hit h i t, get as git. And uh, but he's not very consistent with the way he writes things uh, with the dialogue. So, but anyway, he's trying to just imitate a southern accent. Okay. Well, let's see where we are. Yuki, why don't you start us off? Since it's just the three of us here, maybe we can each take a turn. And fifty-six, yeah. Yeah, fifty-six. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. From the wood pile through the rest of, rest of, of the of the afternoon, the the boy watched them. The rug spread flat in the dust beside the bubbling water pot. 
the two sisters stu stooping over it with that profound and and they 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 lethargic. Oh, lethargic. Okay. Which, which means which means lazy. <coughs> lethargic reluctance, while the father stood over them in turn, in impressable. Placable. Yes, implacable, implacable and grim, driving them through never raising his voice again. He could smell the harsh homemade light they were using. He saw he, he saw his his mother come to the door once and look look toward them with the expression not anxious about now no, not an, no anxious now but very wait, wait, wait. anxious 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 right not, not anxious now but very like despair he saw his his father turn and and he fell to with the with the ache and so from the corner of his eye his father raised from the ground a flourish flourish fragment of field field stone and examine it and return to the port. And this time his mother actually spoke. Abna, Abna, please don't, please Abna. So what's he going to do? <clears throat> what do you think he's going to do? Um, um, Well, <clears throat> is he going to clean the rug or <laughs> something else? So his father turns. He fell. He uh, where was the the thing about the the axe? Loss, the axe. Um, <clears throat> he fell to with the axe and saw from the corner of his eye. His father raised from the ground a flattish they, fragment. They are cleaning. They are they are cleaning the the um, carpet. Yeah. Uh, yes, rug. And the smell of uh, uh, lye. Uh -huh. in, <laughs> Excuse me. Do you know what lye is? Lye yeah. me means it is soap, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, no, but to, to clean. It's it's this, it comes from like limestone. You can use it to make soap, but it's really harsh. It's you can't get it on your skin; it'll burn you, or it can burn you, right? It's a really harsh, corrosive thing. So, do you think <clears throat> Abner is there, ready to clean the rug? No. No. What do you think he's going to do? Um, I mean, why does the mother? Think? Why does the mother say, "Please don't"? He's She's going to ruin it. I mean, I don't know how, but. Uh... Yeah, he's is that that with the axe or something? Uh, no, I think that's um, that's the that's uh, Sardi who's chopping ah. wood is looking. Right? So it is a fragment of field stone. Field stone. So he's going to take a stone okay. and and lie, and he's going to inst instead of cleaning it, he's going to take the stone and st and you know scrape the rug. With ah, lye okay, okay, okay. So mm -hmm. he's probably so. He's 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 doing something like this. Oh, you want me to clean it? I'll clean mm -hmm. it. Don't worry. You wait mm -hmm. till you see a rug when I'm finished with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, which bird do you use, uh, John, to say what, what he was about to do with the stone? Scrape. Scrape. Well, scrape it. He's probably uh, going scrape to. Scrape it. Okay. Because remember, there wasn't there wasn't necessarily running water at that time in the houses. So to wash things, he'd go to the river, mm -hmm. <clears throat> put the clothes on something flat. And you know they have to sort of scrape the dirt off mm -hmm. and scrub it, but yeah. not not with a stone. No, <laughs> that, that way he's going to ruin it. Yeah, pretty. That's what I would it, guess. It, it mm -hmm. the spoil the the rug, yeah. Yeah. And the word placable. That was the word earlier we saw in the paragraph. Do you know what placable is? Yeah, he's got no, no agitation. I mean, he's. Uh... Well, well, I should actually say, 
It's probably, it was implacable. It wasn't placable, sorry. Implacable. So this is a word that comes up several times. Uh, he it was like, no, he's like, um, you know, what's the word? Unstoppable, uh, incorrigible, uh, you know, unappeasing. So they use, he uses this word before. Um, hold on a second. The father, the father stood over them in turn, implacable and grim. Well, grim is kind of serious, <clears throat> and implacable means sort of unappeasing. You can't do anything to change the way mm -hmm. he his mood. Implacable. And in Japanese, how do we say implacable? I I, I don't think so. Shunin <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, you know, very. <laughs> Why do you? Know? I don't know. <laughs> Some people is in 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 in. Uh, some people in implac implacable. Implacable. Uh, uh, Good word. Implacable. <laughs> but not 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 all people. <laughs> uh, Shunin Bukai. Bukai. And don't forget about Shunin Bukai. You are you are right. Yes. And, and what about Jin Jin Jinja? Was it? Jinja Jinja. Jinja. Jinja Japanese Shin Shinto Shinto Shrine. Shinto can, Temple. You can go to a, a jinja and you can practice Shinto there. Am I right? Uh, no. Uh, Shinto, ha Shinto has Shinto lost the meaning of a uh, uh, region. It it, oh. it became a kind of ceremony. Ceremony. Oh, okay. Yes. So so many people go to Shinto shrine, but they are not believer. Of, I think many of them is not. Are uh, not a believer of uh, Shinto, Shinto as a re re religion. Oh, okay. They just go to there, just just play for their their luck for for the future, and yes, and and take a picture, <laughs> <laughs> and buy a buy a souvenir. It's such a kind of thing. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, <Luckily> and, uh, <coughs> um, well, we'll have to talk about. Jinja in another class, unfortunately. Um, so, getting back to Faulkner, um, what the next two are kind of short. Why don't you take? Actually, why don't you take until sixty, um, Carmen? Because these are kind of short. Carmen, did we lose Carmen? What happened to Carmen? Oh, she said one sec. Okay. <coughs> Are you back, Carmen? Yes, but I, I don't know why, but I've got problems with my mic because it's, uh, I can hear you, but I, you cannot hear me. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know. The uh, Hangouts are always a little buggy. They keep making changes. And don't forget, every time they make a change to the Hangout, you usually have to update Flash and Java and things like that. So. Okay, it's a good advice. I'll try to do that. <coughs> yeah. They, yeah. And, and I, it's usually around Wednesday of every week. Updates come out in Flash anyway. Mm. Flash updates a lot. It's kind of annoying. Um, so why don't you take... The next two paragraphs are really short. Why don't you take 57 through 60, Carmen? Okay. Um, 57 to 60. Okay. Yeah. Then he was done too. It was dusk. The whipple wheels had already begun. Wait, just Good. say that word again. Whip whipple whip wheels. What a great word, isn't it? It's just a great word. Is that a kind of bird or something, it's I think? Whipple wheels. Whipple wheels. Whipple wheels. <laughs> whipple wheels. It's a bird. <laughs> okay. It, it's a bird. And if you uh I don't know. I don't have the bird sounds, but oh yes, you can go to YouTube and hear Whippoorwills. But what a great song! What a great, what a great uh, word. Is that like a nightingale or something? Because they sing at night. I guess because if um, I don't know, I'm not from the south, but, mm. <laughs> but, but hang on a second. But I've got a link for you. It's American word. American. American goat, goat sucker. <laughs> I don't know about that, but look. Do you know goat goat sucker? I don't. What is that? But if you go here to this link, you can hear them. If you click on that link, 
Okay. What do you paste it? Goat sucker. What is that? Americano. What is that, Juki? Goat sucker? I don't know. <laughs> goat sucker <laughs> is uh, is uh, also name of the bird. It is a kind of night night jar. Do you know night jar? No idea. Night. Night jar is also <laughs> name of bird. It's a kind of night night jar. Okay. Night nightingale. Yeah, no in, nightingale. In Japanese, y yotaka. Yotaka is famous. Yotaka. I, I don't know. Okay. Now I know. I know Jinja and Yotaka. <laughs> <coughs> and Tomo Tomo Tomagai Tomagai yeah. Oh what's the egg? The egg um the rolled eggs called? Tomo Katadoi. Who? Katadoi. No, no, no. The breakfast thing you taught us how to make. The rolled omelette. Never mind. Forget it. It's okay. <laughs> For, forget it. Yes, you you told us yes. how to make a Japanese omelette for breakfast. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Tomogaya. Uh, no, 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 no. Tamagoyaki. 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 Yes. <laughs> now, now we know Tamago three Japanese. Means, uh, it's egg. Now that we know means... three words. Three words in Japanese. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, if you click on that link in the Verbling window, you can hear exactly what um, they heard. At, at you can hear the the call. If you click on that link and you go to the the the, the third sound file, you can hear a whooper wheel. If you want to hear what did, it sounds like. Did you paste it? You know, I've got something. There's something wrong here with my Verbling chat. Something. I, I cannot see anything. Hold on one second. Hold As you said, I'm just, just going to try to update it later on because this is going a little bit. I'm hopeless, completely hopeless at this. Look in the look in the Hangout chat. Can you see that it? That one, I've got it. Yes. Yes. So Thank you. Chotaka Bras. In Spanish. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. You slow it. Chotaka Bras. You pull wheel. Long call. Ah, you've got, you've got different sounds. Yeah, I just put... Ah, okay. Sotacabras. <laughs> Sotacabras. <laughs> ah, uh, oh, yeah. Do you know? Algo de cabra, sí. Ah. Yeah, but I don't know the name of that bird. <laughs> Sorry. Not even in Spanish. Yeah? What was, the, what was the word in Spanish? I don't know. Something like cabras. Sotacabras. It's not. It's not. Shoot, uh, it's not. Um. It's not. Uh. What you're saying is a uh, is a fictional animal. It's um. Uh. Because it's the same in Portuguese. Um. Uh. Cabra. Uh. What is it? Um. Achota cabras. Yes, yeah. But it, yeah. But it, but it's it's not. It's unreal. I mean, it's just a fantasy. It's a fantasy right, right, animal. Right. Right. Hmm. Um. It's not for real. I just forgot how to. Say, it's the same word in Portuguese, but I forgot how to say. Chota it. cabras. In in Spanish, it's chota cabras. Right. And the thing is, it's quite weird because that's the name that Spanish that gives me for the yes. wheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe so. they can fly. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> um, okay. Anyway, I just wanted you to hear the sounds of the yes. south. Yes. So now you know, what, so you know what names of various from 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 language to language. All all have another name. All language has has another another name. But chupacabra is definitely not a bird. It's 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 supposed to be like mm. a like yes. a like a wolf or a coyote mm. kind of thing. Um, okay, now you know what a whooper wheel sounds like. I've yes, always thank wanted you. to know. <laughs> okay, keep going, Carmen. So okay. the whooper wheels had already begun. So it's mm. it's evening setting in. Yeah, uh, he could smell coffee from the room where they would presently eat the cold food remaining from their mid afternoon meal. Though, when he entered the house, he realized they were having coffee again, probably because there was a fire on the hearth. What hearth. Is that? hearth. Hearth. That's a big fireplace, a ah, hearth. Okay. Like a chimney, something? N not the chimney. That's the, one that, that's the part that goes up to the roof. Mm -hmm. but, but the part where you actually build a fire inside of the bricks, that's the hearth. Ah, and, okay. if it's, and if it's really, really big... It's a hearth because you use it to cook. Well, it, you know, that's not true. You can use it just to, for heat. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's small, it's a fireplace. Okay. You wouldn't you wouldn't want a hearth in your living room because it'll be gigantic. It'll be it's too much. Mm -hmm. So hearths are 
there's a, there's a famous story. Uh, I don't know if it's Edgar Allan Poe or someone, the grave, the gravestone hearth or something like that. It's a short story. All the all kids have to read in grade school. Anyway, about the kid who jumps into the fire. Hearth. 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 Okay. Before which the rug now lay spread over the backs of the two chairs. So they have already cleaned, cleaned it. And, mm. and they're drying it now. Mm, it's, yeah. The tracks of his father's foot were gone. Where they have been were now long water cloudy scoriations. It's like... Uh, scoriations. Because they have scrubbed it very, very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Resembling the sporadic, sporadic or sporadic? How do you pronounce that? Sporadic. Sporadic course of a Lilliputian mowing machine. Right. You know what a Lilliputian is? Yeah, but like a dwarf, very uh, small because one. It, right, because it comes from Jonathan Swift's story. Yes, uh, mm, the giant, yeah. Right. In that, so, so these he was are like, in, a, in a strange land, and there were a lot of Lilliputians there. Yeah. All right. So, hang on a second. So, I just want to say one thing about. Uh, da, 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 da. So, scoriation is mm. like making a, a like a, a streak or a mark. Mm. Right? So it's like it's like a, you know, what's the word? So when he was scrubbing it or, or scraping the rug, mm. he left these these marks. Marks. Mm. Where he, I get yeah, it. Okay. Because they re they did it really really hard, so they got these uh, these marks. Uh -huh. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Uh, it still hung there while they ate uh, the cool food and then went to bed. Scattered without order, or climb up and down the two rooms. His mother in one bed, where his father would later lie. The other brother in the other, himself, the aunt, and the two sisters on pallets on the floor. Kind of like stretchers. Ah, okay, okay. But his father was not in bed yet. The last thing the boy remembered was the depthless... De depthless? Depthless? <coughs> Excuse me. Was... With depthless. no depth. Depthless, yeah, with no yes. depth. Okay. Yeah. Depthless, harsh silhouette of the hut and coat bending over the rug and it seemed to him that he had not even closed his eyes when the silhouette was standing over him. The fire almost dead behind it, the stiff foot prodding him awake. Cut up the meal, his father, his father said. Mm -hmm. When he returned with the meal, his father was standing in the black door, the, ro the rolled rug over his shoulder. Ain't you going to write, he said. Keep going, the last one? Yeah, no, give me your foot. Give me your foot? Yeah, he's got to get on the mule. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do the next two quickly. He bent, oh, I'm going to try if my voice lasts. He bent his head, he bent his knee into his father's hand. The wiry, surprising power flowed smoothly. Wiry means you don't have muscles, but you're strong, mm -hmm. like a wire that you can bend. Remember, his father is always described like tin and jagged metal, and now he's being described as wiry, which is a normal word, but it's especially apt here because of the way we've described him before. So a wiry is something you can say about anyone who is really strong, even though they don't have muscles. Mm -hmm. So the wiry, surprising power flowed smoothly, rising, and he rising with it. So he's boosting his son up onto the mule. <clears throat> onto the mule's bareback. Oh, they don't even have a saddle. He's just sitting on the bareback. They owned a saddle once. The boy could remember it, though not when or, or where. And, with the same effortlessness, his father swung up the rug in front of him. Now, in the starlight, they retraced the afternoon's path up the dusty road, rife. Rife means full of. Mm -hmm. Full of. Rife with honeysuckle. Through the gate, honeysuckle is that sweet flower that you can uh, that you can actually you can drink the nectar from the flower and it's a little bit like honey it's very sugary uh, rife with honeysuckle through the gate and up the black tunnel of the drive to the lightless house where he sat on the mule and felt the rough warp of the rug drag across his thighs and vanish the rug vanished because I guess his father 
took it off and put it back. His father says to him, 62, don't you, uh, don't you want me to help? He whispered. The boy is whispering, sorry, the boy is whispering to his father, don't you want me to help? His father did not answer now, and he heard again that stiff foot striking the hollow portico with that wooden and clock-like deliberation. It's funny how his father always, he's, he's like metal, and he's like a clock. It's interesting. Um, a clock ticks. What else ticks besides a clock? A bomb. <laughs> a bomb. A time bomb. Kind of makes me wonder if that's what uh, Faulkner is thinking, because he's always clock-like. That outrageous overstatement of the weight it carried. The rug hunched, not flung. So it, he's carrying it like, you know, old laundry. Instead of putting it over his shoulder, he's just piling it up, not doing it very neatly. The boy could tell that even in darkness. From his father's shoulder struck the angle of the wall and floor with a sound unbelievably loud, thunderous. Then the foot again, unhurried, enormous. A light came on in the house. The boy sat tense, breathing steadily and quietly, and just a little fast, though the foot itself did not increase its beat at all, descending the steps now. The boy could see him. Yuki, take over for 63, 4, and 5. They're pretty short. Okay. Don't you want to ride now? He whispered. We can. 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 can we we can we can we can we can both both light now the the light with within the within the house altering now Fla flaring up and sinking he's coming down the st stairs now he's he thought he he had already ridden ridden the mule up mule mule, mule, mule sorry ridden the mule up beside the house block. Presently his father his father was up behind him behind him and he doubled the reins doubled the reins over over and slashed the mule across the neck. But before the before the animal could could begin to trot the heart, thin arm came round him. The heart knocked hand jerking the mule back to walk. So it seems like he's hitting the mule for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least uh, he's being too harsh because he hits the mule to get it to, 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 to go. The mule starts to go fast but he pulls the reins back so that it's just walking. Yeah. If it were anyone else they'd probably be running right? But he never changes his pace even though <clears throat> it seems like he wants the owner of the house, Major de Spain, or the servant, to see them. You know, he wants to be very sending a message. It seems like because otherwise he'd be running away. I think, uh, you know, because they he, they could confront him. There could be a confrontation. Um, okay, keep going, Yuki. <coughs> Excuse me. In the first red rates of the sun. They were in in the in the lot, putting putting pro gear on the on the mules. This time the sol solar mayor was in in the lot before he heard it at all. The rider colorless, colorless right? Colorless, Without a collar, colorless and even bare in bare bareheaded, trembling trembling, speaking. In, in the shaking voice voice as a as a woman in the house had had done his father merely looking up at once once before stooping again to the to the him he was backing buckling so that the man on the on the mayor spoke to his stop stu stooping back <laughs> excuse me Plow, plow gear. You know what a plow is, right? Yes, for for the soil. I mean, when you want to, it's like this. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's when like you a, a little, a little, a little wheel. Mm-hmm. To help you, you with the, the crew and that sort of thing. 
literaturu tu famu. Right. So he's he's loading up the mule to 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 be ready to plow the fields. And why is the rider collarless and trembling? <laughs> Because it's the first red rays of the sun. So what time of the day is it? What what hour do you think it is? Very soon in the morning. Uh, morning. Yeah, the but very morning. very early. So it's probably like six in the morning. And the guy is not even dressed, right? Because this is a rider colorless. So he's probably like just woke up and rode out uh, and is trembling, speaking in a shaking voice. So not happy <laughs> and he's speaking to the guy's back because the guy's uh, Abner is ignoring him okay go ahead Yuki let's do 65 you must realize you have ruined that that rug wasn't wasn't there anybody here any of your women he he ceased sh shaking the boy watching him the the older brother running now in the stable door. Leaning. Leaning now. Ah, sorry. Leaning. Uh, the older brother leaning now in the stable door, chewing, blinking slowly and steadily at nothing appear uh, apparently. It, it cost a hundred dollars, but you never had a hundred dollars. You never will. So I'm going to change you twenty. Charge you. Sorry, I'm going to charge you twenty bushels of, of corn against your crop. I I read it in your contact, and when you come to the commissary, commissary, you can sign it. What want to keep Miss Miss Mrs. Des Payne quite quiet? But may, maybe it will teach you to wipe your feet off before you enter her house again. Okay, bushels. Hmm. They used they used to measure things in bushels. Bushel. What do you think a bushel is? Like a measure or something. Like yeah, it, it's like a basket. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, how so? Twenty baskets full of corn. Because um, he doesn't have any money to pay for the rug, so they have to charge him by making him do extra work. So instead of getting paid, he's got to the first 20 bushels of corn, however long that will take, that will pay for the rug. So he's being he's being charged for it, right? Mm -hmm. Clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The I didn't have a chance to do the formatting, so there's a lot of numbers here. Hang on just a second. Why don't you take until 72, um, Carmen? This okay. was, sorry, there's a lot of numbers here, but the formatting is, is a little bit messed up here. Sorry about that. Okay, so you're starting on 66. Then he was gone. The boy looked at his father, who still had not spoken or even looked up again was now adjusting the larger head in the hay. So wh what is the hay? I have no idea. Uh, must be an animal or <sighs> something? No. no, 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 I don't think so. No. I, I have absolutely no idea. I was trying to look it up. Hold on okay. a second. Okay. One second. <clears throat> it's a uh, carved metal piece lying, yeah. lying on the color of a Dorot animal. Attached to the color of a truth animal. Kind of uh, okay. attachment to the horse. Yeah. No? Let's see if I can find a picture as well. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, I can see a horse uh, wearing those. Okay, it's the part you hold on to the, where you hold on to the uh, the collar. So there's a harness. And then the harness, yes, yes. the kind <clears throat> of harness attached to the house horse. Yeah, but it looks like it's the um, it looks like it's the little piece that you hold on to. So not the reins, but a little piece that sticks up that you that you grab onto on the collar. It's not the bridle, ain't it? It's not the what? The bridle. The bridle. 
Oh, the bridle, the bridle. No, no, because the bridle is on the face, oh. on the head of the horse. This is part of the reins, where the reins are attached. Oh, the reins are attached to the bridle, actually. But it, it looks like it's the actual... Um, hang on a second. Uh, I can see a better picture. It is attached to the color of an horse, maybe. Yeah. Animal to to bring. Oh, it's just the collar. Okay, it's just the collar that goes around the neck. It's the part that goes around the neck. Because uh, I can see I can see something in Google Images here. The hain goes. There's a collar and then there's a hain. I really I'm not exactly sure what it is because there's a collar and a hain. Then there's the part that connects it to the plow, is the girth. So I'm I'm <clears throat> not 100% sure what the difference between collar and hain is. But anyway. Anyway, it something you you adjust to the to the. Yeah. To, it, to the horse. It, it seems like it's the place. It it looks like it's the place where the plow will attach to the collar of the horse. That's what it seems okay. like. Okay. Yes. Pop, he said, his father looked at him. The increase. Inscrutable, inscrutable, inscrutable face. Inscrutable. You cannot, you cannot scrutinize his face. Mm. It's inscrutable. Uh, the shaggy brows beneath which the gray eyes glinted coldly, coldly. Suddenly, the boy went toward towards him, fast stopping, and as suddenly, <laughs> you done the best you could. He cried. If he wanted hit done different. Why didn't he wait and tell you how? He wouldn't get no 20 bushels. He won't get none. We'll get, we'll get her. We'll get her. We gather hit and hide hit. I can watch. We gather it and hide it. I can watch. Gather. I gather like putting together? Gather the corn. <coughs> gather. gather. To collect. To gather. Yeah. We we'll gather heat and the high heat. I I can watch. That means I can watch. Right. I can watch. Okay. Did you put the cutter back in that stray stock like I told you? No, sir. He said. Then go do it. So it sounds like he's sending off his his son. Um, okay. The next one is keep going, Carmen. The next one is kind of big. Okay. That was Wednesday. During the rest of that week, he worked steadily at what, at what was within his scope and some which was beyond it, which, with an industry that did not need to be driven, not driven? even driven, nor even commanded twice. Industry had, means work ethic here. Industry means work ethic. So he was working... Uh, with an industry that did not to be driven. He was working um, without being told what to do, mm -hmm. just automatically. So industry is not like, you know, the automotive industry. It means mm -hmm. it's it's his ability to work. He was he was focused. He was focused. Mm -hmm. Even commanded twice. He had this from his mother, with the difference that some at least of what he did, he liked to do. Such as splitting wood with the half size axe, axe, sorry, half size axe, 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 half size axe, which his his mother announced had earned or saved money somehow to present him with with um, with to present him with at Christmas, in company with the two other older women, and w on one afternoon, even one of his of the sisters, he built pens for the for the shoat and the cow. What is shoat? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> for the shoat? <laughs> I have no um, idea. Hold on a second. I, I don't know. Oh, it's a, it's a, a baby pig. A little pig. pig. Ah, okay. It's an animal. Right. He built <clears> pens. <throat> uh, why is he building pens for the, for the animal? The pens? Okay. To, uh, pens are fences. <clears throat> fences uh, around ah, okay, the world. Okay. Okay, okay. Mm, for show and the cow, which were a part of his father's contract with the landlord. And one afternoon, his father, being absent, gone somewhere on, on one of the, of the mules, he went to the field. They were running a middle pasture now. His brother, holding, holding the plow, 
straight while he handled the reins and walking beside the straining mule, the rich black soil, shearing cool? Shearing. Cool, cool, damn, shearing. No, not shearing cool, but shearing. Shearing. Right. Shear. shear you know, you can shear a sheep, you, which means ah, to, okay. to, to cut off the, 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 to cut off the wool, hmm, to shear. The floor. Okay, okay. Um, and damp against his bare ankles. He thought, maybe this is the end of it. Maybe even that 20 bushels that, seem, that seems hard to have to pay for just a rug will be a cheap price for him to stop forever and always from being where he used to be. Thinking, dreaming now, so that his brother had to speak sharply to him to mind the meal. Maybe he even won't collect the 20 bushels. Maybe it will all add up and balance and vanish. Corn, rag, fire, the terror and grief, the being pulled two ways like between two teams of horses, gone, done with, with for, done gone, with. done with forever and ever. Mm. Should be one done word, with. forever. Done with. <clears throat> so maybe if he pays this, this fine, maybe that will put an end to it. Because the alternative is that he's going to go, it's just going to keep escalating. And they just arrived. That's the amazing thing. They just got there and there's already a problem. And it's, it wasn't even the first day. They hadn't even started working yet. Mm -hmm. This guy is a mess. <laughs> uh, it reminds me, I know people like this. It reminds me of <clears throat> people I grew up with. Um, all right, let me see if I can just do one last section here because this is the never-ending story. I remember this being a short 10-page story, but apparently I'm wrong. A 10-page? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I remembered. I thought it was about the same as the Flannery O'Connor story, but actually this is quite long. I'm just taking a look. Okay, let me see if I can just do one more section before we go because we just have three minutes. Um, the last thing you read was what? Forever and Ever. Uh, okay, 71. 71. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can just get to the next. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, let me see if I can just do the next section here. Okay, 72. Then it was Saturday. He looked up from beneath a mule and he was, he, from beneath a mule he was harnessing and saw his father in the black coat and hat. Not that, his father said, the wagon gear. And then two hours later, sitting in the wagon bed behind his father and brother on the seat, the wagon accomplished a final curve. And then and he saw the weathered paintless store with its tattered tobacco and patent medicine posters and that, whoops, should be one paragraph, and the tethered wagons and saddle saddle animals below the gallery. So now they're going to the store. Mm -hmm. He mounted the gnawed steps, gnawed like a mouse had chewed on them, mm -hmm. right? So the steps are worn down. He mounted the gnawed steps behind his father and brother. And there again <clears throat> was the lane of quiet, watching faces for three of them to walk, of quiet watching faces for the three of them to walk through. So they're going to the store, and apparently they're drawing a crowd of people for mm -hmm. some reason. Maybe they were just watching at them. Yeah, everyone's just staring at them, the crowd. Mm -hmm. So maybe they already, uh, the word got out <laughs> about yeah. what they did. Mm. He saw the man in spectacles. Hang on a second. Oh, maybe they're back at the store where they had the trial. Maybe that's where they are. Oh. Ah, maybe they are. I didn't think about that. It's another trial. Yeah. No, 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 the trial, but I'm saying maybe they went back to the store that we saw in the first, um, okay. in, the, in the beginning of the of the story. Maybe that's the store. Ah, same because store. He's, yeah, he's okay. referring to the man in spectacles, and that he, he knew that, yeah. he knew him from... Okay, from yeah, yeah, that's it. So remember, they, they were kicked out of the county. They were told never to come back. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they just came back. Oh. <laughs> He saw the man in spectacles sitting at the plank table, and he did not need to be ah, told this okay. was the justice of the peace. Mm. He sent one glare of fierce 
exultant <coughs> partisan defiance at the man in the collar and cravat now, whom he had seen but twice before in his life, and that on a galloping horse, who now wore on his face an expression not of rage but of amazed unbelief, which the boy could not have known was at the incredible circumstances of being sued by one of his own tenants and came and came and stood against his father and cried at the justice of his peace. He ain't done it. He ain't burned, says mm. the boy talking. Go back to the wagon, his father said. Burnt, the justice said. Do I understand this rug was burned too? <laughs> so the, <laughs> the boy is talking about the barn because he's remembering the last problem. Mm. So, yeah, maybe Yuki, you're right. Maybe this is another trial, actually. I'm, I'm a little bit confused because I don't remember this. Uh, but I, okay, I haven't read the story in a while. <coughs> Does anyone here claim it was? The father said. Go back to the wagon. But he did not. He merely retreated to the rear of the room, crowded as that other had been. Uh, but not to sit down this time. Instead, to stand pressing among the motionless bodies, listening to the voices. And you claim twenty bushels of corn is too high price for the damage you did to the rug. He brought he brought the rug to me and said he wanted the tracks washed out of it. I washed the tracks out and took the rug back to him. But you didn't carry the rug back to him in the same condition it was before you made the tracks on it. His father did not answer. And now for perhaps half a minute there was no sound at all save that of breathing. The faint, steady suspiration of complete and intense of intent listening and that is the end of part six because <laughs> we have to start we have part seven of our never-ending story barn burning but maybe someday we'll get to the end <laughs> but pretty suspenseful for a short story don't you think I can't wait to find out what's going to happen <clears throat> so just to be clear before we go um, uh, hang on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Just to be clear, um, uh, da, da, da. they go to town, right? Uh, Sardi and, and Abner go into a store and they see the Justice of the Peace Court is in session in the store. Who is the guy, the collarless man in the store? Who is he? It's just a judge. face. It's sorry, Carmen. I couldn't hear you. Um, I didn't hear what you said. Is it the judge of peace or something? The, it, the justice of the peace is wearing spectacles, and who's the man without the collar that we saw earlier? Can't remember. It's Major to Spain. It's the ah, owner. okay, okay. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Right. Oh, Sardi doesn't. Sardi doesn't realize that Abner is suing Major to Spain. So this is different. It's not. I, I thought. It, I thought they went back to the old court. This is a new court. But Abner is taking the owner of the plantation to court because he thinks that he shouldn't have to pay twenty okay. bushels of corn. Uh, okay. Okay. It's like he's suing him. <laughs> he's suing he's, the owner. Yeah. He just put the ah. guy in court. And Sardi blurts out that the father isn't guilty of burning barns, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he doesn't realize that's not why they're there. They're mm -hmm. there because of the rug. Yeah. And Abdur sends him back to the wagon, but he stays in the store to see what happens. Okay. So just, just to be clear, what's going on? Uh, okay. So they're going back to court because uh, Abner is going to sue his his uh, the the owner of the of the well, major of Spain. Right. Because he doesn't think the deal is fair, and he has to pay. The bushels for the for the rug, and I think it's too high. The price has got to pay. That's it. Okay, get it. So, so we're we're in what appears to be a, a repeat of the last situation because we didn't really know why the, we didn't know exactly what happened in the last case, but here we are in a new farm, and they're back in court. The father, the son, the justice of the peace, and and the owner. So a different owner, but seems like it's just repeating. 
but I, there's Just one thing that I that I that, that I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, he's working for the major of Spain. Right. He's paying him. He's uh, he's paying him money for the work he's doing, and he's going to sue him. He's going yep. to sack him. Yeah. He's <laughs> stupid of him. He, of course, he's a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, the point. <laughs> Yuki, was there a question? I, uh, he always doing such a thing. Yeah. It it appears this is a this is the pattern. And it seems like he he works himself up and works himself up first doing something, you know, doing something to show that he is not a slave, you know, and then and then they make then they punish him and then he retaliates and it keeps escalating. Then he takes them to court, and then it's going to escalate until something's going to get burned to the ground. I mean, that's what it oh. seems like it's going. So, oh. and the whole time the boy keeps fantasizing that maybe this time will be different. Because he's never seen a place as beautiful as this before, and he keeps fantasizing that maybe this time things are going to be different. But we'll see. Okay. Uh, so, okay. so he spoke out this, this time. And he spoke out because the boy is young and he doesn't really understand what's going on. Uh, so he's defending his father against barn burning, <laughs> but <laughs> that's not what they're in court for. He got ahead of himself, right? Uh, okay, we're gonna have to stop. I'll be back in just a minute for um, the getting result for the um, how to talk about facilities class. We're going to learn key expressions. Uh, we're gonna work on our key expressions, making suggestions in a meeting. Uh, but this time, the key expressions in the meetings are gonna be about suggesting changes to your work environment. Okay, so we'll be doing that in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Bye for now, everyone. See you okay. in a minute if you're coming back. Yes. If not, have See a good you. weekend. Bye-bye.